What is going on, everybody? Garrett back here for Rad Company, episode three. And I got a special guest here, guys. You might know him from the tube. I am here with Mr. The Hustle Man, Mr. Side Hustle Cinema. What is going on, man? Welcome to the show. Ah, uh, good to be here, man. Feeling <laughs> feeling kind of rad tonight. Oh, damn. <laughs> I like that. I like when you can come on here and stop feeling a little more rad in your own skin. You know, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show. Guys, if you do not know this guy, go check him out. Side Hustle Cinema. His uh, Instagram and his social media handle should be in his YouTube link in the chat. Uh, probably in the description, I think. I hope I did put it in there. But if not, Side Hustle Cinema, go check him out. Um, guys, thank you guys for popping in. We got a lot of people kind of just pouring through right now to check this out. Uh, what I like to do on these rad companies is just kind of, you know, shoot the shit a little bit. Um, you know, talk to my guests about their channel, what they're up to. And I like to keep this about 60 minutes long. So not a long stream. Uh, so if you guys can hang in with us and, uh, feel free to ask some questions to me and him. And I hope everybody out there is doing good. So before, um, I hand this over, uh, to the chat, I'm just going to let, Side Hustle Man, just tell you a little bit about what he's doing over on his channel. All right, guys. Well, um, you know, hopefully some of you know already, but <laughs> for those of you who don't, uh, you know, uh, Side Hustle Cinema, it's um, right now I have a, a series going on called Art of Collecting where I kind of uh, talk about the packaging a little bit, you know, um, it's brought up all the time, you know, and all the, all the, you know, all, all the breakdowns and everything. Everyone, you know, the packaging is pretty important these days to the collectors anyway. And so, um, you know, I kind of do this thing where I give like a little thumbs up, thumbs down, talk about some of the new packaging, you know, stuff that's coming out. But then I show off like some of my uh, custom slips, you know, I make some custom slip covers. And I get some uh, orders in here and there. I like to show those off. People seem to like to check them out. And uh, that's that's been a real fun series. But, you know, I also do the collection updates, uh, occasional trailer reactions or 4K reviews. Uh, we got Chucky Season 2 coming up. I followed Chucky Season 1 uh, big time. I, I did a review of every episode. I, I plan on doing that again. For season two, I, I keep a Chucky kill count because the one that Chucky gave at the end of season one was not accurate. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> he did. Yeah, he. Yeah, they. I was totally surprised when they did that kill count at the end of season one because I'd been keeping one all season, and I swear they gave him about three or four more kills than he, you know, should have oh. gotten. And I did a whole breakdown on it. It's still on my channel. Of, you know, if you want to, it's the season finale of the Chucky series. If, if anyone wants to check out that video. But yeah, they, well, they definitely gave him a few kills that shouldn't have went to him. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's kind of veer off into some Chucky talk uh, based on that. But uh, before we do, we got a little super chat coming in. Lefty Vision. Thanks, my man. And uh, dude, email me. I don't know if you saw my comment, but uh, chuck me an email. Um, the man, the myth, the side hustle cinema. Don't forget to roundhouse kick that like button. King of slips, slip king. Hey, <laughs> thank you, man. And yes, guys, hit that like button for sure. I got another super chat popping through as well. We got my man over here. Where is he? Where is he? Where's Gus? I saw his face pop up. <laughs> Look at this guy. Yeah. Rad Pack forever, Mr. Gus. Thank you, man. Hopefully you guys have checked out that last episode of Rad Pack episode three. Uh, I guess people seem to like it. So we're going to probably do a continuation of that one that we did. So thank you so much for the super chat, guys. We just got started. We're already too deep in here with some chats. So uh, you guys know what that means. And you know what? I know the hustle man likes this too. Here we go. <laughs> I do love that. That is <laughs> that is great. You love the the Haim dance. So yep. we were we were chatting Chucky. Now what's funny is I'm a huge Chucky fan, big Child's Play fan, but I have not seen the show. I've only seen episode one um, of the show. I don't do really well with with shows that I have to watch uh, on a regular basis. Like for me at this point, I'm better off just buying the season and just watching it straight up. 
Um, I'm yeah. hearing it's great, and I'm hearing season two is on its way, and that looks really good too. Um, you know, we as collectors kind of have different rules that we try to follow when it comes to our collections, especially at a point, I think, where we've been doing it such a long time, we can't get everything. Like, that's the problem. And I don't know how you feel about it, but there was a point in time where I just wanted everything and anything. And now I've just, I've got to have some rules because now we've got Blu-rays, we've got 4Ks, we've got special editions. We got, there's so much out there. So with Child's Play, I'm like, you know what, do I just buy season one or do I just ride this thing out and wait for a big complete set at the end? Like, and that's the thing, like patience has to be, you know, the key there because who knows how many seasons this thing is going to have. And if I'm right. going to try to wait till the end and hope for a big set. Uh, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I did do that with Ash vs. Evil Dead, so I did hold off and wait till it came out. So, um, but that only went, I think, what three seasons? Do you know? Yeah, three three seasons. So, um, you know, with that being said, like, do you have any specific rules like with your collecting at this point? Are you kind of getting anything, everything you can get your hands on? Are you limiting it? Do you have any specific rules that you're going by currently? Um, I mean, you have to pick and choose. I mean, because I want it all, you know, for the most part. I mean, and so you have to set some boundaries. But uh, right. And I, see, I like I like a lot of different things. You know, some people like you know they gravitate toward maybe certain you know uh, boutique labels, or maybe there's people out there that kind of only pick up the studio titles. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I I, I kind of like a little bit of everything. I've been trying to hold off some on getting the studio titles right away because those do drop in price, especially if you like get them on eBay. I mean, right. you can get them on eBay like for 10, at least $10 cheaper, like without the digital code um, in about a week, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I tend to, you know, pay up for the boutique labels because, you know, the, slip exclusivity you know right yeah because you don't want to miss out on that but um mm -hmm. you know i also like to import stuff you know I, I love to get you know uh some german media books um those are really expensive you know right. but i i really dig those so i like to get those sometimes but then uh, i don't know just i like so much stuff you just kind of have to pick and choose yeah know? it it is. And the problem is now it's like, there's just so much, like, I can't believe like there's never a dull week anymore. I feel like, and it comes to a lot of stuff because it's, if it's not, if it's not coming out, it's announced and you've got to jump on these pre-orders, like you said, because sometimes if you wait, there's certain things that you may miss out on. So for me personally, like I'm not a big slipcover guy, um, mainly when it comes to anything besides boutique labels. And the reason is, is like it was, you know, with screen factory, like, Every collector's edition had a slip that I have. So I'm going to keep that train going because at this point, it's like, why would I just have like one or two without? It doesn't make sense to me. Right. Um, vin vinegar syndrome, like same thing. Like if I can get it with or without a slip, I might as well just get the slip. Um, the problem with like studio titles and that for me personally, it's just like, you know, it's almost kind of like a no win situation because there's it's such the wild west on what has a slip, what doesn't, um, what kind of slip it has. So to me, it's just, it's not uniform enough for me to care. Um, but you know, a lot of people like they do care. And with me, like when I get a studio title, which again, like you said, it's not something I get on a regular basis. I usually wait on studio titles. Like, man, we're approaching black Friday and you're not to think that a lot of these movies that we're getting out now, we're going to probably be there. So if you don't care about things like a steel book, which sometimes I do care about that stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just worth a wait. Um, I haven't picked up black phone yet because in my opinion i'm like you know what i just saw it not like probably a couple weeks ago right it's not on out 4k maybe i'll hold off and wait for a 4k or a steel book or something like that i did the same thing with x and it's it's really killing me because that was like my favorite movie of the year and i want to watch it again but i'm yeah. holding out because like i know that's going to get a 4k because it's, it's really weird that it wouldn't so i think one was announced either in this country or somewhere else so i think i'm just going to wait and bite that on the steel book but yeah, yeah, it's tough, man, because, you know, everybody's got their own little thing. So going back to what I said about, you know, Scream Factory and slip covers and stuff like that, I do want my collection editions to have slip covers just because, again, I want things to be uniform. Um, and that's just me. And that's one of the rules that I have when it comes to that. And, we you know, we're talking about Child's Play. When this set was announced that we talked about, um, 
you all know my biggest issue and, and I probably sounded like a broken record with it, but this is just the way my brain works as a collector, right? Like I look at that set and I say, wow, cool set. One, two, and three. Awesome. You get some posters. Again, I don't care too much about that, but with the slip covers, I do because of the screen factory rule that I have. So looking at those and I was like, all right, so we get two extra commission slips, but you know, what's going on with this part one? Like it just on the shelf, it's not going to make sense when I look and I see original post art, original post art, and then a commissioned artwork for part one, the same commissioned artwork that we got on the Blu-ray, which to me just screams laziness. And you know, there could have been other reasons. Like people said, well, maybe they commissioned the Best Buy that to Best Buy with the artwork for the steelbook. Maybe, but if, but it has a reversible cover inside a reversible sleeve. So the art's there, right? It's just right. very wild West like, and, you know, I put it out there and I said, hey, you know, every time Screen Factory posts something about this set, post underneath, like, you know, maybe throw in the additional slip of the original cover. And even if it was like, hey, if you want that original cover slip, it's part of this bundle. Like I would have bit on the bundle just to get that slip because I wanted things to match. So every which way I tried to maneuver, it just didn't work out. So sound like a broken record that I was. So, again, like, look at this. You got look at the beauty here. You got boom. And then you got this, right? Like lame lame dude like come on like where's my where's my vhs boxes from back in the day right. well you know i whined and whined about it and you know people heard it and mr side hustle came to my rescue here because look at this oh baby one of one right now first ever i'm gonna put this bad boy on here Ooh. oh yeah look at this this is what I'm talking about, guys. Look at this. Now, <laughs> how much better does that look? Look, it's got the spines. Everything matches. Look. Perfect. Okay. It's got the same back. Now, it just, it makes sense now, you know? And and uh, thank you, man, for, for doing that for me because my collector mentality, my OCD was just going crazy with this lack of original artwork. So, I know right now you're probably going to get a lot of DMs that people want to clean up their Scream Factory Child's Play set, you know? Yeah, I, I already have actually. Uh, you yeah. you weren't you weren't you weren't the only one who oh, uh, damn it. had that idea. Damn it! Who else was it? Somebody in this chat, you speak up. Um, but speaking of the chat, let's run through. I don't want to ignore the chat. I want to see who's in the house because we do have quite a bit of people in here. Tim Talk Talkies, what is up, my friend? Uh, great stream last night. If you didn't catch that uh, last night, uh, go check it out. He was on Ken's channel. They were talking high-end collecting. Yep. Tim Powers that was, is in here. That was great. What's up? Jerry, what is up, man? Oh, you saw that Scream Factory. You're going nuts now. Look at this. Born <laughs> to hustle. That's damn right. That's what this is right now. Yep. Hollow Notes, Rad Pack, what is up? Side hustle, loyalty, and collect cinema. Let me see what's cracking mid-level is here oh it definitely you know what that was how i first you know got to know this guy was he was on ken's channel whenever that was and as soon as i saw that backdrop i'm like i'm all in i'm all in on this guy as soon <laughs> as i saw it and then i think you even mentioned you were thinking about changing it. i was like no don't change that yeah i was gonna move to a different location shoot with a different background for a while <laughs> And then everybody told you not to, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, man, I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Gus, what's up? What's up, Mel? Hey, Mel. Slaughter part, what is going on? Riverman. Yeah, man, this guy's wallpaper is killing it, though. Look at that. I don't even, is that what it is? Wallpaper? Is it like kind of like a, uh, it, it's actually, it's actually a tapestry. Um, that's what to say. Yeah, because I, I just hung it like behind that, uh, like that built in, uh, kind of built in around it, and used that as the backdrop. It, that's awesome. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. Uh, and like the whole the whole top shelf there, that's all Stephen King stuff, you know. Woo. So those are like the Makes Stephen sense. King, a bunch of Stephen King movies, and a couple neck of figures and different things. It's a pretty large shelf though, too, because it's expanding right through your whole. Screen. Oh yeah, it's 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 like I don't know. 10, 10 feet long or something, 10, wow. 12 feet long. That is nice. Pretty long. Um, so horror collectibles. 
Is there anything that you want to get at some point, any kind of horror collectible that you can think of off the top of your head where you're like, you know, I missed on that or it's always something I've wanted, but maybe it's just a little bit out of my reach. Um, I mean, I would like to get into like more of the statues. I mean, right now, I mean, I collect a ton of the NECA figures, you know, I've mm-hmm. got like about 35 of those. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've got all the Friday the 13th ones. Um, the, uh, Toonie Terrors, I, I pretty much have, I think I'm only missing like two of the Toonie Terrors. Wow. Um, Funko Pops, I, I get several of those, you know, mostly for the horror ones, but. Um, trying to cut back on those a little bit and uh, honestly um, a few Mego figures I, I get a lot of stuff um, yeah the collectible stuff is <laughs> I, I, I spend about as much on collectibles as I do movies uh, well oh, between wow. collectibles and autographs especially mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've, I've gotten into the autographs was bit by that bug and now it's just uh, you know it's tough, man. Yeah. Like, when did you get bit by the bug? Like, recently or uh, years and years ago? Well, I, I went. I went to my first convention like uh, about two and a half years ago, and I've been going to like, like, like at least like around three or you know three or so every year. So mm-hmm. I, you know, and then uh, I also subscribe to a few of the uh, mystery boxes, you know, where you get the autographs in them. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, I have hit up a few auctions and things, but I, I really like to try to meet the people in person. That makes it so much uh, better, you know. Mm-hmm. Then when I look around the room and I see the different autographs, you know, and it just, you know, you have that memory of meeting that person. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's that's always great. Yeah, man. Um, I agree. I'm actually in the same boat with you when it comes to a lot of stuff. Like I'm into the NECA stuff. Um, I've calmed down a little bit on it, but um, Toonie Terrors, I've actually tried my best. Like those in reaction, I've completely stayed away from just because it's like one less thing I want to have to try to get all of. And and I think the Toonie Terrors are great. It's just that again, it comes back to like, I got to be picky and choosy because there's even other things I'm buying. Like if I'm out somewhere and I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, uh, a classic 80s wrestling guy. I'll get it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's other things that I'm doing that I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't get everything. So Toonie Tenors have took the back door uh, to me and I think they're really cool, but I think I might bite on, and this is where it's going to get tough. Like I saw a Teen Wolf one coming out, which I'm a yep. huge Teen Wolf guy and I feel like it never gets merch. So Teen Wolf is going to be like the one that's going to put me over the edge with that. And I really like the Halloween three ones as well. That always seems to get me when it comes to Halloween three. My biggest issue is, can I get those and then just like leave it as is? Or is that, am I going to start thinking, well, I got to go back and get them all. Like, that's where I think that my collector problem is going to happen is as soon as I have those, I'm going to think I need the rest. And, you know, I don't know if you get that way too, but for years I didn't touch a Funko pop forever. And I said to myself, I'll never get one of these unless they do lost boys and then sure enough that year they did lost boys i grabbed all the lost boys and then i said well if i have lost boys then i should have karate kid because that's like my other favorite movie and then if i have karate right. kid then i at least need to have uh teen wolf and then it was oh well if i have that then i should at least have back to the future and, th- and then it just got like it like it started like that and i was like all right i gotta stop now you know what i mean like that yeah. it was just getting crazy um so if i had to think of anything that off the top of my head that i would love is uh two things i don't have any busts which I wish I did. Uh, there's a couple busts online. You guys may have seen me repost this one. Um, there's a Michael from Lost Boys and an Evil Ed from Fright Night that are like, I don't even know how I get a hold of these things. I've talked to the guy. He's not making them anymore. He said he could send me the molds, but then I'd have to go get it painted somewhere. It's it's a big process, but like those two things are big for me. And there is a NECA, um, you know what's funny is I'm, it, there's this Devil's Rejects mask Remember that thing that came in like a little, it was like that metal mask that came in like a shadow box. Um, they mm. NECA did it and it was always something I wanted and I was like, eh, I'll get it eventually. And that thing is like going for huge money now. So yeah. I always check it online on eBay or whatever, just because it's a pretty cool item. And every time one pops up, it's just really high. And I just don't want to spend that kind of money for it. But um, off the top of my head, those a couple things besides like movies that I would, you know, be sought after for me i think right yeah um 
but let me see who else is, is coming through. Vanderhoff, what is up? Um, and then we'll get back into the chatting. Let me see. Uh oh, Ken says Chucky has earned some extra kills here and there. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> JS, Haim keeping it fresh. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, I'm way behind on this chat, ain't I? Hall of Notes. Mm. Hall of Notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably safe to get Chucky Seasons to come out. I look along to one, two, three, four. Oh, you don't think a Chucky complete series will come out? Um, Chucky Seasons. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm surprised that it it. Well, no, sci-fi shows usually come out, right? Um, like it seems like the same production company that did like the Purge series is doing mm -hmm. this one, and uh, so they did two seasons of the Purge. Uh, both came out, you know, on disc, but at the end there was never any, you know, complete set. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not sure. Dead pits in the house. What is up? Which boutique hill is the worst and why is it Scream Factory? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I don't know. They 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 make a lot of little mistakes. It's like little like they do such a great job in one thing, and then it's always like one little thing that I have an issue with. And again, that just could be a personal thing. Like there's a lot of people I'm sure that looked at this set and were like, This is great, perfect, gimme, you know, and I'm looking at it and being like, What is with this deal with this artwork? You know, like these are like little things. I always find something, something small. That just kind of right. hurts me. And I, and I don't know why. To me, it's almost like if you're going to do it perfect, like just do it perfect. And you know what? <laughs> if Ken's in here, Ken's going to say, it's not that bad. Uh, I'm not a Marcus Slip covers. Trust me, this guy asked me if I want any. I declined them. I didn't, I yeah, didn't need them. That's true. You know? See? I, I offered more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. We got. Uh, Jim Powell, Shell Factory has no rule. That's okay. So that's another issue that I have is that you're right. Like, it's just kind of like, here, here's where you're getting, deal with it. Like, there's no rhyme or reason. That, there's no rules. Like, some have hard boxes, some don't. Some have original artwork, some don't. Some have, you know, back of backs of the discs. And then, you know, they give you these new ones that have this on the back now. So it's like, there is like really no, no rules anymore with like how they're going to kind of put things out. And that, again, as a collector, um, I think sometimes that may bother people. Um, and now I guess an issue is, is that they were saying that they're going to be offering a new collector's shipping. Have you seen that or heard that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an option you can check or uncheck. Right. So a couple people I know have had damaged boxes come in with this child's play set. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if, or, or they're even saying like, when you've got this child's play set, these discs were kind of bouncing around in a huge box. Like they weren't like secured or anything. Right. And you just kind of wonder if they're kind of like, well, if you want the extra padding, like you're going to have to pay it, you know? And, and that's just, again, I know things now is, you know, we're everything's going up in price. I get it. But at the same time, it's kind of like, really? Like, do we need to go that route? But, and I'm just hoping it's not going to be across the board with every company. Now I hope they don't start like a new thing. Right. I, I've seen it, you know, with, with a few uh, places, um, you know, I, like I think High Def Ninja does something like that. Um, uh, a few toy companies does it, too. Um, you know, you can pay for collector shipping where they'll, uh, you know, take better care of it, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think Big Bad Bo Toy Store does that. I've and yeah. I've actually never I've actually never used it um, and I've had no issues, but uh, I know they do do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. I just saw a good one. Oh, Tim's talks talkies. I'm on the island with my slip stance. Even boutique label slips don't matter about it. Yeah, I mean, um, again, I, I'm not crazy about it. Like, there's plenty of vinegar syndrome titles I bought through sales that didn't have a slip anymore, and it is what it is. I'm not going to go chase after it. Um, you know, there's plenty of times I've talked to Christian, uh, Hannah, about this. Is that we've we've both contemplating with just being like, hey, you know what? Why don't we just sell all of our Screen Factory slips? make a killing and then just have that to spend on other stuff because, and, and, and he's right. Like he, <laughs> I'm the one that's kind of like, Oh yeah, that would be awesome. And then I'm like, Oh, should I, should I not? It's, it's tough, right? Like it's not that big of a deal because again, to me, if you look, you know, if you look behind me, that's where I have all my screen factory in this, in the shelf behind me, but you can't see it too much. Um, but you know, they'd be all uniform if none of them had slips. Right. So if everything didn't have a slip to me, I'd look at that and be like, Oh wow. Everything looks uniform. Everything looks the same. 
Right. So it would look, he would have a nice slick look to it than have like the first four rows with like slips and the rest not. But at the same time, it's like I have a tough time pulling the trigger as well, you know, and I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just don't well, do it. I, I mean, I agree with you. I, I, I sort of used to feel the same way. I mean, I thought, you know, that movies without slips kind of looked nice on the shelf. You know, you had those little blue tips all mm -hmm. lined up. Um, but then, you know, I've started to realize how much value people put on slips right. and, you know, I mean, at the, it's just cardboard, but you know, if enough people value it, it becomes valuable. Of course. Even yeah. though it's not a, a precious material, you know? Yeah. I mean, and that's what it I think it no, is too. Yeah. I mean, it, it has no value. It's perceived value. Mm -hmm. um but that's fine i mean that you know and it works for me you know right. I, <laughs> I, I you take know advantage I'm, of it <laughs> if it was like if it was up to me um and it came to slip covers like and i this may not bother people but you know i wouldn't have the strips on the top of like blu-ray or or 4k i would have just the full plane image i i would i would have the nice black on the sides like i you know sometimes you'll look and you'll see a nice like this slip cover and then you're looking through and there's some with like blue tips at the top of the slip cover then there's gray tip like there's just there's no uniformity with slips and with companies right so a lot of times that's to me that's a little bit annoying especially when it get to to mainstream titles it's like they're all over the place with how they're styled and what they look like and stuff so um right but yeah it, it is an interesting concept just because it's it's meaningless but it's like anything else i mean what makes things valuable are are the people right so look at look at baseball cards now baseball cards are like skyrocketed again where you couldn't give those things away five ten years ago but it created you they created an audience and now the want is there and vhs tapes the same way like we basically create the value by how many people start getting into this kind of stuff um which going back to that like so we know as as you guys kind of saw with the child's play slip covers this guy here actually creates slip covers and he sells them does giveaways um for titles that maybe these slip cover collectors can't get or they don't exist right like case in point the new malignant 4k for whatever reason that didn't come with a slip which like i said before main reason i don't collect uh mainstream studio releases because it's the wild west and to try to chase down all these things or to have things not match or whatever it's just not worth it to me i'd rather just have them all match by the by the case themselves but he's right. he's created some of his own to kind of you know get people's collections the way that they want them so let me ask you this um how do you know how to do this and did you go to school for design did you like how did this start for you were you doing it for yourself and you were like well you know maybe other people would like this um well I, I did. I did go to art school. Um, okay. You know, I, I, I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Um, my major was uh, computer animation multimedia, uh, which you know included like a lot of Photoshop. Um, you know, I took graphic design, a lot of graphic design courses. You know, uh, so I mean, all that stuff uh, helped a little bit. I mean, it, it does help to know Photoshop a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, basically I just, I mean, it's not terribly hard. You know, I get asked that a lot, but honestly, we all have slip covers at our house. I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, you need to know the measurements and, um, you know, you can kind of see how they're constructed a little bit. I mean, you know, I don't have, you know, factory, you know, machines, but, uh, you know, you find an image that works. I mean, there's. You know, there's a whole bunch of places that have the artwork for the jacket covers, you know. And so basically you can take the picture of the jacket cover and, you know, you have to scale it up. You know, you got to uh, change it a little bit. And that's where some of the Photoshop stuff comes into play. And, uh, you know, you can put it to the, the right size for the slip cover. And, you know, you do need like um, a, a better printer you know, one that uh, can handle that, that thicker, you know, cardstock. And, um, and then you just basically, you know, print and cut and glue it together. Um, and I mean, you know, I, I 
it's been trial and error. I mean, when I first started it, you know, probably the quality wasn't very good and it's progressively gotten better. Um, matter of fact, just here in the past like month or so, um, is really when uh, things have kind of um, really come around for me, I think, as far as that stuff goes. I, I bought a brand new printer and, and it's, I've loved how it works and, Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not terribly hard. There is a couple of videos out there. I've I've thought about doing a tutorial video on on you know kind of walking through the basic steps of how to do it. You know, given the measurements, given the uh, paper weight. But a lot of these um, places where I get the images, like um, there's like HighResCovers.net or something like that. They have forums that have all those templates and. You know, you can get all the the fonts and uh, all the images and everything that you kind of need. And then, uh, you know, I like to go out and grab like T-shirt designs, you know, um, or you go to Pinterest and you look for artwork there, fan art, different things. I mean, that they, they, you know, you can make some really cool slip covers with that stuff. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much, you know. That's pretty much how I did. I, d- I did a couple of uh, these, you know, Bill and Ted's because, you know, this is coming out on 4K, but it's it's going to be a, a shout select. But it's not a collector's edition, so it sh- probably won't have a slip cover, I'm guessing. And uh, so, you know, like I created this one, you know, it's got the yellow spine. Like it's going to, you know, like uh, the, the, the case or the, yeah, the case is coming out. It's going to be like that. And right now, I just threw that on the back, but, you know, the Wild Stallions uh, logo. But uh, if you wanted the the specs and stuff, I can throw those on there, too. But, uh, you know, I had other ones. Um, Gamer on 4K, that one came out uh, recently. It also didn't have a slip cover, you know, so I made one for that. You talked about Malignant. Mm-hmm. Um, that was another one. The Happy Death Days. You know, I I, I did a couple covers mm-hmm. for those, and I've got ones available with the the specs on the back as well. Um, now this is one that has a slip cover, but is super hard to come by, and so I have made so much money off this cover. <laughs> it is crazy. And that's that, uh, you know, that Kino Lorber, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've, I've probably made a couple grand off this cover. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I for, some, movie. for something so, like, again, you need talent to be able to do it. No questions asked. But for something so funny where it's like custom slips, where there's that, there's that much want for something like that, right? Like that, that you're making that much off of it, that people like you know what i I can't get this i want it and i'll take this version or whatever like it's just it's crazy to me that when make like i said imagine if i sold all my slips my screams like you could make quite a bit of money just on pieces of cardboard right like it's nuts now my dad owns a print company um so but you know i don't know if i mean i'm sure if they did this they could figure it out but like for instance, how did you know what stock of cardboard to get? How how to cut it? How did you cut this? Not with scissors. You must have like a cut, like a like a big thing, right? Like a straight. Um... No way, really. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, really good cut. <laughs> That's why you know, like it's it's wow. just a it's, it's a kitchen. It's yeah. It's a. I mean, because this is where I do it right here. Um, you know, it's uh. Just a razor blade, a ruler that you can see through, so you can see where you know it starts and stops. And um, yeah, cutting board, just a kitchen cutting board. Look at you! You're, and, you're going old school. You're like the hitchhiker over there. You got a good knife, and you said it's like the old way with the blade. It's better that way. <laughs> and, and a steady hand, I suppose. You know, a steady hand. Yeah, yeah, night crawler over there, but. Um, that's that's cool man and now using your you know graphic design talent doing this doing that um if you haven't followed his channel what what he recently posted is he's doing more custom things um which i saw one of his things he doesn't have any on him i asked him 
that I'm really interested in getting. It's almost like a VHS. Uh, it's one of those things where like when you were a kid and you went to the VHS store, they would have on the front desk like, oh, you know, I think he showed a Scream one in one of his videos. It's like, hey, Scream is here. Reserve your copy today. And it shows the box and it's got. And he did one like that. And I was like, oh, my God, like I need something like that. I don't know what if I'm going to put it on the wall. I don't know if I'm going to put it on my desk. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. But it, it just was so reminiscent of something you don't see anymore. And I was just trying to think to him, like, he's like, what movie do you want? And that's where my dilemma is. I'm like, yeah, what movie do I want? My first thought is like, oh, I want Lost Boys. No question, right? But, right. you know, and then I'm like, well, I already own Lost Boys VHS. Maybe I should get something that I don't own. Maybe I should get a VHS tape that I don't have, right? And that's where it gets a little bit like, what should I get? But um, those were super cool looking, man. I, I loved them a lot. And, you know, you've been doing other things as well that kind of people are kind of digging. So if you, I know you brought a couple to the table uh, to showcase as well because it's just it's some unique stuff like what it, it's almost stuff you would see at either like a mini, mini version of what you see at a theater or a vhs store or at a video store or something that was on the front desk right yeah um, like like there's one for like first blood you know and uh and, and yeah th these could easily be like converted into like uh like you know you you could like put your um like a like a candy uh, display or something like for your man cave or whatever, or actually you know I've had this one like set next to that steel book set that I have. You know it just looks really good on the shelf. The yeah, only problem that's is actually, you know, that's actually uh, something uh, another uh, gem that I need. I missed out on that damn steel book set. I can't get my hands on it. <laughs> He's rubbing in my face. Look at this guy, Lost Boys. And then there's there's some Lost Boys little. Another little shelf setter there, and then uh, ooh, there's there's another one, bro. I have that I have that poster right here on my wall right here. Yeah, that I mean, it's, yeah. it's an awesome yeah. print. That's a sick. And print. Uh, for all the all the black phone fans out there, it's very cool. Yeah, and then you know you can have some comedy in there too. I like my lampoons. <laughs> That's the old the old family truckster. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you're a big you're a big Caddyshack guy too, right? Oh, love Caddyshack. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got a really cool image. If you guys don't know, you go to check his head. He, he did like a room tour, I think, once. Right? Is that where that you showed that? Yeah, I've, I've actually done a couple room tour. My very first video ever on the channel was a room tour video. Um, but I have done one since then, and probably need to do another one i mean things just keep changing all the time uh, yeah I hear but you, yeah i mean if you check out the very first video that i did um that one also shows my my theater room uh the second room tour video only covers the uh you know this like movie room youtube studio room mm -hmm. i was going to do a second part of the theater room never got around to it um, yeah, I, I could probably do another one though. Oh God, maybe we should, we should race to see who can get it done first. Cause I've been promising a damn room tour video for like months now. And I, <laughs> every time I'm like, video. <laughs> oh man, every time I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it this weekend. Something comes up. Cause you know, I, I don't want to just be a regular room tour. Like I have visions of like how I want it to go. And you know, I'm going to need my brother here with like all of his equipment and stuff. So it's just one of those things. And as soon as I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it this weekend, like he's away or, I've got stacks of movies out because like we just did like a Rad Pack episode. So I had all my uh, mini puppets and monsters all over the floor. So it's so something always happens, but it's coming. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I've always loved room tours and you know, that's why I want to make it extra special because that was like, even before I got on YouTube, that was like my favorite videos to watch was what people's setups were because, you know, as I'm making setups, I want to see, Oh, that's a great idea. I should do something like that. Or, you know, it's just a great way to get ideas on maybe things that you're not doing or, or would be a cool because people just have very different visions. And I, I just love to see how people set up whatever space they have access to. Um, so it's definitely a cool thing. And I think yours was great. You have that backdrop in there. I, that lampoons thing was really cool. Whatever you have, I think it's up on a mantle or something. It was a pretty unique thing. That's all I remember. Yeah. Well, you know, this, this room here, this used to be a family room, you know, I like uh, changed it to a YouTube studio and so there's like a little fireplace there. And uh, yeah, I got a, you know, I got a, like a David O'Keefe uh, Ode to Bushwood uh, print 
And like I had that thing custom framed. It's got like museum quality glass to it. Uh, I love that thing. Um, like they have one of the originals um, uh, hanging in the Caddyshack restaurant. You know, I, I live in St. Augustine, Florida. And um, so they have like the World Golf Hall of Fame here and the Caddyshack restaurant, Bill Murray's, you know, restaurant. And so, um, yeah, it, it's really cool. And then I got like all the, the, the movies and like all the different formats, you know. And uh, yeah, it's just one of my favorite movies. It's uh, I love Lampoons, especially the early stuff. Uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for Caddyshack, I don't think we would have had Ghostbusters, honestly. I mean, there was a chain of events that happened. I mean, if you like, if you know the history of Caddyshack, uh, I've thought about doing a video. But I, you know, I don't, I don't know how popular it would be. You know, it's kind of it. It'd be like a deep dive, though. I mean, there so many things wouldn't have happened if that movie would have flopped or if it hadn't came off. And let me tell you, the stories on behind the scenes for that movie. I mean, I would have loved to have been on set for that one. I mean, it it sounds like it was just crazy. Now, is there is there a doc out on any of the the discs? for that or is this all something you know just because of, of your research um i no, i have seen a, a there's there's a couple of documentaries i mean there's some books um I, i've i've read all that stuff you know because uh like any any of the like the early days of lampoon stuff like they had that uh that movie oh, what is it um what fat drunk and stupid or something like that was that one um, of their early ones it, well, it was a do, it was a documentary. Um, uh, I it, I didn't see it, but I, I like the idea that you know a movie like that is one of your favorites because you know in the community that we're in, more or less, it's horror talk, right? Like I try to branch out and and talk about other things because there's a lot of other genres that I'm into, and it's I think it it as much as like you said, yeah, I don't know how good the Caddyshack video would do, uh, maybe not, but you know I'm big in the same thing. Where it's like, you know what, if I want to do it and I want to talk about it, like the right people will find it. And I think right. that like for me, um, I would love to hear about that because I love that movie. You know, it's not one of my favorites, but, you know, it, it would I think it would give a newfound respect for it. And it would probably after I watched the video, I'd probably be like, you know, what, I want to watch this again, knowing what I know now. Right. So um, I think that's a great idea as much as if it's a, if it's hey, I think it's just reaching a new a new group of people that that may check it out yeah and be like, oh, I, you know yeah it'd be nice stuff, to have it just know? archived of course yeah definitely i think it's a great idea now before we kind of get back into what you've got coming up on the channel i know like again you've with all this stuff you've got going on with the youtube your real life um doing these custom things for for people like you're busy man like so for you to come on here it's it's probably relaxing for you because you're always hustling you're always on the go um well, so I'm, i want to get into the chat go ahead yeah okay. yeah Oh, well, I was going to say, I mean, I work nights, so, you know, I have like a small window to do these, you know, type of live streams. So I love it, you know, because every, yeah. every like weekend when I'm at work and I'm watching like a, you know, Tim Talks Talkies has like these great live streams and like all these really interesting uh, discussions and different people, you know, all these different people have them. And, you know, I, I like, I like wishing that I could be a part of those. But I'm like stuck at work, you know. So and, you're uh, are you at work physically? Or do you work from, right from home? Uh, no, at, at work physically, yeah. Oh yeah, so you can't even like you can't even take a second, or, or you're not sitting at your desk where you can have the YouTube show on. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but um, uh, well, no, I, 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 I do have time, and like, I mean, I, I chime in. I mean, I've, I, I, oh, I know, every I've time been, I've been in, on your um, live streams, yeah. I've been at work almost. Oh yeah, I was gonna say you have showed um, up on a lot of my late all rattling up up all night. Yeah, and pop in. I mean yeah, so, okay. that's all. That's all usually from work. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I try to hurry. You know, like an office space where the guy's like, you know, I really only do about fifteen minutes of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end it's of the day, it's kind of like that, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you're you're always you're busy. <laughs> so, um, what we'll do is I'll go back to the chats again. I don't want them to feel left out because. There's, there's just a lot to talk about. So hopefully I'm, I'm well, not hopefully I'm way behind and uh, hopefully I can find some stuff here. Uh, some good stuff. Maybe when people saw uh, what you were showcasing there. So um, let me see if there's anything good here. 
K Dog, you say don't care about slips, just take two or three. Hey, I thought about it. Um, originally, I, I said it in my video if you haven't watched it. But like I said before, I, I I do, but I don't. Like I don't care about slips, but at the same time, when it comes to like Screen Factory, I'm like, well, I can't just have three collector's editions without the slips, and then every other one. It's man, it's collecting has weird rules, and I know everybody's got their own. So um, I I hear you. I hear you. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. What's up, Don Morton? What is going on? Uh, let me see. Robert Long. Hopefully, Creep Show gets a fork. I think it's going to. I think it's probably going to. Uh, probably this year, I think. Look at this. It's like you're, you're Mr. Fix It over here. If you have a slip problem, Side Hustle is the place to go. People are just going to start sending you rip slips and asking you to fix them for them, I think. <laughs> uh, oh, see? Look at Kenny wants one. What's up, Ken? Yep. You want one of these? Kenny Lev's. Uh, let's see. We got. I can help you out, Ken. <laughs> Ken, he said he's one of one. <laughs> no, yeah, I thought I was, but I I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, oh my God, Deadpit wants to know if can you make him some slip covers that say Scheme Factory as the logo? That would be I, bad. I, I, I probably could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Imagine he's got every slip for every screen factory he owns, but on the on the bottom it just says Scheme and just factory. just misspell everything. <laughs> oh my Maybe God, put the awesome. disc replacement directions on the back. Oh yeah, yeah, you could just do that. You should just make a like uh, you should just make one that has like all those like different like a Scheme Factory one that has all these different errors, and just send it to Wes so he can like showcase it over. Um, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so he does. He does make some good stuff. This one's good, man. I mean, I was, I'm very picky with everything. Like, you know, when it comes to movies, and you know, like you, like I said, this, there's certain things about these that bothered me. But um, I wasn't sure what to expect with this, as far as the quality, as far as you know, what the the it felt like, and um, it's it's one of the best I've ever had, um, as far as any kind of like, I, I wasn't sure. Like I've seen people do custom slips before. But it was always yeah. like very, you know, um, the quality of either the paper itself, the stock was was bad, or um, it was fuzzy, like you could tell it was pixelated or or faded. Um, and this right. is really really sharp, very sharp. Yeah, uh, you have to have a good image. That's that's what it comes down to. I mean, at least three hundred DPI. Wow. See, I don't know anything about that stuff. So, like, like you said, I'm sure that the printer that you have has to be a pretty heavy duty one. Yeah, it's one that'll like print posters and stuff too. Like uh like this poster here. Oh dude, don't even start with the posters. I'm gonna have to start sending you stuff. Be like, I'm going to a convention. Like, that is awesome, man. That is so yeah. nice. So like yeah, I printed this one out before I went to my last convention because they were doing the you know the part two reunion and I got like the cast that you know, everyone was there to sign it. Wow. But that's uh, a nice yeah. image. And and they all love the poster too. I mean they're Warrington Gillette kept wanting to sign right over the mask. And <laughs> Good I'm thing like, you stopped them. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, it's funny because I, I wear those like uh, those camera glasses. Yeah. And so the video's on my on my channel there, and so we're having this um, negotiation of where to sign. You know, he's like, how about here? And I'm like, not there. How about here? <laughs> and then he's like, uh, do you want me to write like a tagline? And that shocked me because, you know, he doesn't talk in the movie. And he's like, I could write oh, yeah, die yeah. bitches or yeah, how right. about die bitch die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, wait, but like, you don't a, you don't say that. Yeah. What what a weird conversation is, to have with someone. <laughs> that is weird. Now going back to autographs, man. Like I was a and I still am. I, I love autographs. I, I, I think, you know, the problem I think now is that's why I asked how long you've been doing it for. Um, I talk about this with Deadpit all the time because we've been doing this and collecting autographs since about 07, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, we were lucky to get a lot of good ones cheap. And now it's hard, right? Like when I go to conventions now, I, I make a, a, a small list because a lot of the ones I've gotten, I've gotten and I'm like, I'm good. You know, sometimes now they'll throw out people that are like ones that I was never able to meet. So at least now when I go to convention, if I'm going to spend the money. It's like, well, I might need two. Well, back in the day, I would leave and I would have like 10, 
you know, that I have to get. So um, you now kind of getting into these, like, are you, is it, it's crazy with the prices, right? Like a lot was spending like 20, 25 bucks for most of the ones I got um, back in the day. Like Robert England was $30 and I got a bunch of stuff signed from him. Oh, you know, wow. Now he's like up in like the hundreds. Yeah. Right. So um, it is, it is definitely um, interesting for sure. Like how things have changed now, you know, like with you going to a convention, you, you know, like, Oh my God, if I have to get this, 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 it's going to be, pretty decent money oh yeah um you know and and i hate when you don't know how much they're going to be like when they don't list the prices prior to getting there mm -hmm. and so you know it's kind of hard to sort of budget or um be able to sort of select well who am i going to leave out who am i going to you know take right. you know or how much cash to bring i mean like in the last one i went to I I brought six hundred dollars in cash just for autographs, and I thought I was good. I ended up having to go to the Mac or the uh, ATM like a couple of times. It's it's insane, man. Um, I'm going to, to a convention next week. Um, there's nobody I need there. Um, there's two people there that I'm going to hopefully chat with or maybe even do a photo op. I don't usually do those, but um, I've met Daniel Harris. Uh, probably three times already. Right. Um, I'm going to try to meet her again. I know she's gone way up in her prices. I don't need anything signed. I've got a bunch of stuff from her already, but um, I don't know, maybe do a picture or something. I I'm not sure yet. Um, but also Felissa Rose, who I've also met twice and she's like the nicest person. And oh, yeah. um, sh she's doing a photo op with like the whole, the camp outfit on and all this other stuff. So, and I think they're going to have like a campground background and I have my camp rad pack shirt. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to fork over the money to do that just because it's different. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know what to expect anymore when it comes to that, that kind of stuff with the, with the autographs, but then chiller is one that I go to every year and I'm going to hit that up in October. And there's a lot of people there this year that I want, like they're doing the ET reunion. And I'm like, Oh man, like I would love to get, an ET poster signed or something, you know, like, but again, now we're running into, okay, what is, you know, what is that going to run me now? It's tough. And I have an item and you guys will see it in my room tour video that I would love Anthony Michael Hall to sign, but you know, with him now, it's like, I've gotten Anthony Michael Hall's autograph twice. Uh, this item that I have want him to sign is a big item. And, and he's got this new policy now where it's like, if the item is over this much uh, in size, it's more money. It's like, what, why? Right. You know, like, why if the item is a larger item, it, you don't have to sign it any different. I'm going to hold it. You're going to sign it. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like, those are the type of things that it's like, just out of purpose. I'm like, I, it's just hard for me to be like, okay, yeah, I'll pay it. Go ahead. Sign this because I want it. It's, it's, it's annoying. Like, I just don't know when it ends with that kind of stuff. Uh, do you have any conventions coming your way? Uh, there's actually one coming up this weekend. Um, Phantasm in Orlando is coming up. Uh, it's one of Sean Clark's events. So, oh, yeah. He, yeah. Sean Clark keeps the prices down. Like all his people, um, you know, they're, they're reasonable. I mean, you know, most of the, like the headliners, you know, because he like does the scream guys, you know, he like, mm -hmm. you know, has yeah. all those people. Um, now they, they charge a little more, but that's, that's kind of to be expected. I mean, they could charge a whole lot more than they charge already. But uh, you know, most of his guys stay around that that forty dollar um, price point, forty or fifty. You know, um, but you can tell who's like not one of his guys. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever you go there. Well, what's uh, are they gonna? Is Scream Cast gonna be there? No, no. This okay. is um, it's actually kind of a weak lineup. There's uh, a few of the Michael Myers people like. Uh, uh, let's see. Don Shanks is going to be there. Uh, uh, the 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 one that was in H two O. Was it Gerard Gerard or what? Also, it's got a lot of like it's got the H two O Myers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There was there was a few good. Uh, the the big the what was supposed to be the feature was um like they're having the the people from Fear Street. Oh wow! So okay. The, yeah, they were having the three killers from Fear Street, and then uh, the the Ruby, Ruby Fear, or whatever whatever her name was, the you know, <laughs> the main yeah. the main girl there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like I like the that that series. I thought that was a good. Yeah, I, I, did I, too. I haven't seen any of them come around, so that's pretty different. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, is there anybody that you're eyeing for sure? Like, are you going to get the Fear Street, or you're like, eh, I could do without? No, or? no. I, yeah, I would definitely get the Fear Street. Um, and then you know, I'll continue to get the Michael Myers people. Um, you know, I, I've gotten some of them already. You know, I've gotten. Uh, I've gotten the big ones, you know, I got, uh, James Jude Courtney and I've got, uh, castle. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got, uh, uh, t- uh, Tom Morga. Yep. Um, just got him. Um, but, uh, like Tyler Maine's going to be there, you know, um, you know what, you know what you should do with the fear street. I don't know if you already know what you're going to get signed, but, um, uh, if you take the Fear Street logos, right? Like, I don't know if you'd want to get them all on one sheet or what, on one on one poster, but um, Waxwork just came out with an awesome Fear Street vinyl set that I got, and yeah. inside each each thing has a Fear Street artwork, right? Like each one, like like 1990. What was I? Don't, I forget what the dates were. 90, 94, whatever they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And. Each one has a cover that kind of looks like it was one of the books from back in the day. Like it has like that kind of imagery on it. Right. And, uh, if you can find those and check them out, like those, are, it's pretty sick looking because it, it really just kind of gets the feel of like those old school covers back in the day when we were kids. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely a cool, uh, a cool headliner for sure. Um, I missed out on Matthew Lillard. I'm actually kind of pissed because Scream was at a convention I went to last year and I got skeet. And Lillard was right there. And to be honest, their lines weren't that long. But now I hear it's like insanity for them too. And this was probably last mm-hmm. November. And I was in a room and like I just walked right up to Skeet. I probably late, stayed in line for maybe like three minutes tops. And uh, Lillard was right next to him. And they weren't that expensive, surprisingly. But I'm, I'm curious now if, if they've gone way up just due to like Scream coming out. Because this was before uh, the movie had, had dropped. So um, – yeah, I don't know. I, I wish I would have got Lillard because I have a feeling now he's probably more than he was a year ago. Yeah. Um, um well see, I think well Nev like Nev does the photo op and the autograph for a hundred. Okay. She does. So, so, so it's like a, the full price for everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, it's not it's not terrible. It's not bad. I mean, you were talking about Daniel Harris. I mean, she charges like eighty. That's crazy, for man. Autograph and photo. That oh, for both. Yeah. Okay. That's not the worst. I thought it was like 80 just for a signature. But I mean, even when I met her before, I think I paid 25 the first time and maybe 30. And you got the picture and the auto. So like it just shows how much things have changed, you know, all the years. And it's just it just takes like that one dude to up the price. People still get it. And the person next to them be like, Well, if they're gonna pay that for him, they'll pay that for me. And it just goes down the line. And uh, oh, yeah. You know, I, I think that just um, has a lot to do with it. You know, like on Chucky, like uh, this that last convention I went to, that um, they had that one kid in, in the series who played Junior. Um, of course, you didn't see the series, but um, well, I don't want to spoil it for you. But ah, go ahead, I don't care. He doesn't make it, <laughs> <laughs> and and he was charging sixty bucks. Wow, the same price as Alex Vincent. Mm-hmm. And which is funny because Alex Vincent, I have this funny story about him. He was always at the conventions and he's a nice guy. I I met him twice, I think. Um, But he never had, his table was always dead. Like to a point where my friends and I always like made a joke. Like, like there was one time, I think it might've been like a, like a Sunday or something. And we looked over and he was literally like staring, like he was, he was looking at something in the, on the floor or something. And he must've just been dozed, like, like kind of like out of it. Cause it, he was just in a dead stare looking at something on the floor for like a good five minutes straight. Like he just must've been zoned out and there was nobody at his table or something. And my friend's like, look at Alex Vincent. Like, what is he doing? I looked it over. He's just kind of like, like that. And then, then a couple minutes later, my friend goes, dude, he just put a sign up that said half off autographs. I'm like, what? And he's like, no, oh, no, like, no, he didn't really. But my friend always saw every time, every time we see him at a convention, my friend's like, dude, I think he's half off today. <laughs> and I'm like, You're an asshole. but now he's probably making good money because of the show. But like, at that time he was like 25 bucks and like he barely had anybody go to his table. And it was just, it's just interesting just to see how like one little thing can change everything. Like 
he can upcharge now, especially when season two comes out. Like he might be 80 with Danielle Harris, right? Because he's hot again. So it's just funny to see how little things can just make a huge difference um, when it comes to that scene. But um, guys, it's already been an hour. Uh, we're going to wrap it up soon, but I'm going to run through this chat quick just to see if you guys have any questions for me or side hustle here. Okay. So Ryan Adams, what is going on? And if I skip you guys, I'm sorry. I'm just going to kind of try to see if I can see anything, uh, worth us looking at here. And oh, I, I, told, to I told everyone in my video that I was going to give away a slip cover tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So we what need we to do, do that. Let's do it. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, let's see. We need to, we need a question. Maybe, um, do you have anything off the top of your head? Question. So we want to answer a question, uh, tonight yeah, on this chat. Probably, probably do like first person to answer, I guess. How about um, this? Um, we'll do, uh, let's see. Yeah, we can do since uh, since the new Adams family trailer dropped today. I guess um, I'm not sure what to think of it yet. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the trailer. I saw that it dropped. I didn't watch it, but I saw the image yesterday. Yeah, uh, they dropped for the cast. I was kind of taken back a little bit by it. So uh, here's the question: Who's playing Gomez Adams in the new Adams family show? It's a show, right? Yeah, it's a show. All right, whoever writes down first in this chat, who's playing Gomez Adams? Because when I saw that that picture, I didn't know who was playing who, and I looked at it, I go, this, isn't, this ain't real, right? Like, I didn't think, I, I just swear I didn't think it was real. I was like, what is yeah. this? It's like some kind of, like, cosplay thing for Spirit of Halloween. Like, I didn't know what this was. I thought it was a joke. And then all of a sudden, I saw Fangoria post it, and I'm like, wait, this is real? Um, I like Jenny Ortega, don't get me wrong. Like, I think that... Yeah. She's been good in X and she was good in Scream. Uh, she'll probably be fine, but it was just an interesting choice. I think Gomez to me was the one I was kind of like, what? Because I'm so used to the original. And then Raul Julia, who to me was like, uh, uh, like 10 out of 10 Gomez Adams. So um, when I saw this, I was like, what the heck is going on here? But uh, let's see. I haven't gone down this far in the chat. Let's see. Let's see if anybody threw it in there. Yeah, it looks like uh, might be. Might be Lapke Vision Vision Films, Cody. Uh, he's the first one I see. Lapke Vision. He beat out Brian Goes Blue with Luis Guzman. Now, do you think he's gonna? Do you think he's gonna show Pugsley like the the goat or like the brain or like the bat wing or anything like that in this show? <laughs> do you think? Do you think he's gonna do that? I was, I was curious. That'd be great. <laughs> 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 and then he kicks him in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that that's a winner of a show right there. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the trailer, so I don't know what he's like. I haven't watched the trailer, so I don't know if they show how he's acting or whatever, but it's very interesting choice, I thought. So uh of course it's Lepke, the man who has no other social media. So how are we gonna get a hold of this guy here? Uh he has my email address. All right. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, he can uh, he can get in touch with me. Now, do you have the slip cover, or is it of his choice? What uh, of his choice. Whoa! Anything he can say, anything. Almost well, as long as I can make it. I mean, <laughs> I know what he's gonna say he's gonna say this. He's gonna say this. Just watch. He'll say it. Um, let me see. I will uh, again. I had to scroll all the way down to see who won that contest. So let me just look here but that was cool man thanks for doing that um look at this we need a ck and ub and rad pack bobbleheads i don't know if he can make those i don't know I, that might be a little bit much now you're not doing bobbleheads now are you not I yet i haven't started now I, I i am pretty good at sculpting I used, to do, I used to do cake decorating actually i was pretty good at uh modeling chocolate and uh you know Working with fondant and all that stuff. Oh my um, god! You know what's going to happen yeah. now? People are going to message you and ask you if you make them a fondant slip cover, and then you're going to start this whole new thing. Everybody's <laughs> going to want it because oh, it's going to be like it's kind of embossed. You know, it's a whole going to be a whole new thing, and you're going to be the I, cause. I used to get hit up all the time for like uh, wedding cakes and baby showers. Wow! Oh, it was crazy. That is that is uh that's dude man of many talents over here. 
Um, Steve Mowers, what is up, man? Um, let me see. TJ Frizzy, you got a Born to be Rad shirt? Uh, post a picture of it somewhere. Unless you did, I, I don't know. Um, let me see. Mama Blu-ray's in the house. What is going on? Um... Oh, is that where it came from? CHS took the advice from me after I told him. Oh, so you did do that? Um, no, he came to me and he's like, we got to do it, dude. Let's do it. And I think he was probably, I think he was probably hesitant. And then if I said, okay, let's do it. He probably would have been like, all right, yeah, let's do it. You know, but we both kind of <laughs> like, you do it first. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. Um, look at this. What is this now? I used to think slip covers were anti-theft devices. I used to burn them in my fire pit. <laughs> You know, I, I told Mel, cause she's really into slips too. as like all my studio releases, I throw them in a box and she's like, no, you don't. So I just took a picture of like this box and it's just like full of slip coverage. She's like, it's like a pot of gold. at your house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hashtag slip in a box. That's what, that's what we're going with there. Uh, see, Mel says, don't sell the slip covers. Just give them to her. Drown me in slips. Let me see. Look at Adam's 80. He's tosses his slips. Wow. You're going to make some enemies in here, man. I mean, at least Even, sell them. I agree. I would sell them. Uh, before they were popular, I would throw them out. I actually used to sell mine. Um, there was like a Facebook group that was like, that would buy them. And I would, but you know, you'd sell them for like three bucks a piece. Right. And then they, they would just pay for shipping or whatever. So uh, I never threw any out. I sold them and then I, I kept some just in a box. Because again, if I ever, you know, sell this disc, I might want to add the slip cover back to it. I mean... I never knew they were going to become a popular thing. I just hate throwing things away. Um, let me see. VHS for life. Yeah, I miss my VHS. Look at this. Mama Blu-ray giving you props over here. Next level. Yeah. I, I sent uh, Movies and Sue. I sent Sue uh, a couple of uh, Ghostbuster slips. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. nice. Side hustle made me some slips for some deep dives. I never had some cool, 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 cool. Slumber party massacre slip we're looking for. Oh, I guess he wants the good, baddie, ugly. You get look at this. You're getting all these orders. So message well, this guy. He's on Instagram. Yeah, definitely, your handle definitely out. yeah, definitely find me on uh, Instagram. Don't don't order off of eBay. Um, I charge way too he much in there. there. <laughs> Yeah, that's well, I mean, dude, but listen, like I don't I don't fault you for that because it's insane on eBay now. Like all the fees and stuff you're gonna pay now, it's it's brutal. It's it like is, they, but you know they take like 15% now. Uh no, it's it's not quite that high, but you know, I mean eBay, I don't know those people. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's I'm sure they're good people, movie community people, but you know, I want to take care of the people here yeah. in the community. Agreed. Agreed. You know, the people that are in the chats, the people that are subbed to my channel. You know, th these are the people I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help. So I try to keep the costs as low as I can, but still, you know, get paid for my time, you know, of course. Of course. and, you I know, mean, you got to do it in this day and age, man, you have to, you know, you have to get paid for your time. Time is money. Uh, we all yeah. know that. Like you said, like it, it to even just do these streams, right? Like it's, it's taking that's time that you could be doing other things. Like I'm sure you probably got a couple orders that you could be doing if you weren't on here, right? So, um, right. I, I totally hear you, man. With my business and, as well, and, like and this, it. this good man, the ugly slip. The first time I put this on auction on eBay, it it brought in seventy seven dollars for a custom. I mean, you know, not not even original. And people yeah. paid $77 for a custom slip for this movie. That's it's that's crazy, man. Like that's Auction, auctioned it off a few times and then I just started selling for like straight 25. And um I mean I sold like 60 of them in probably about three weeks. Um Tim Talks Talk, he's talking about room tour videos, one of my favorites to watch so much. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I love him. Uh, Tim, you know what? I'm, I don't know if you saw, I, I reposted this, but um, Tim's a big uh, poster guy like myself. So um, not only did I love room tour videos, but Dead Pit had a poster video back in the day um, that I reposted recently. It's like one of my favorite videos they've ever done. 
and they've got so many like one sheets and stuff from their collection from back. If you should check that out, man, I reposted it in my community tab or whatever on, on YouTube, like two days ago. You probably like it. It's one of my favorite series they did. Um, let me see. YouTube plus Mel should do live commentary for Caddyshack. Man, I, it's been a while since I've seen Caddyshack. Um, Caddyshack 2, I think, is good as well. I saw Caddyshack 2 in the drive-in when I was a kid. Yeah. And I can't remember what movie I would have seen it with. What year did that come out, Caddyshack 2? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, let's see. Oh my god, I'll never be able to read that that print. Well, um, what year did Beetlejuice come out? Do you know that off the top of your head? 87? Um, I'm sure people in the chat are telling me. But part of me feels like I saw Beetlejuice and Caddyshack 2 at the drive-in in like a double feature. But yeah. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it was. So Yeah, that, uh, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, 87. All right, yeah. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, Rad Pack poster he wants you to make. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look Rad at that! Dude. We'll just have to send it around the loop. Like he'll create it, then he'll ship it to me. I'll sign it, then I'll ship it to Mel, and then she'll sign it, and then she'll ship it to Justin, and then he'll sign it, and then we'll ship it to you. How's that, Adam? That'd be cool. <laughs> that I mean that that's that's some next level stuff right there. Yep. Um, Gleam in the Cube never got a proper release. No, not yet. Um. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, the prices are tough as conventions now, man. For sure, for sure. We were lucky. Um, you now they're talking about things that they want to come out. Yeah, uh, Ken, it is. It's good that you don't care about autographs because it's a it's a slippery slope over there with those things. Um, what the heck? The only autograph you have is John Cena's on a hoodie. That's actually that's a probably a pretty valuable autograph, to be honest with you. Yeah, is that from meeting him, Ken? I wonder. Yeah. yeah how was how did you meet John Cena? Because you can't see him. No, nah, that's true. I mean, and he like I think he's only done like one convention too. Um, I think it's uh, I think he did like New York Comic Con. I think that was like his only real event. Here we go. Who's, Ryan goes who's like the favorite? Who's your favorite person that you that you've met? Me? Yeah. Um. Corey Haim, I would say probably. Um, oh man, that that would have been so good. I would have loved that. Yeah, he was. Uh, it was. I met him twice, and you know, it's probably my most fond memory. It was actually, I think, the first convention I ever went to. I went because it was a Lost Boys reunion and Corey Haim was there. Corey Feldman was there. Uh, this was right around the time they were filming that TV show, Two Corys, and they were fighting at the convention. So they had to oh, do wow. all the different Lost Boys like panels apart. So it was Corey <laughs> Haim and all the boys. You know, it was there was no uh, no Jason Patrick and no Jamie Gertz, obviously, no keep for Sutherland at the time it was just the lo other lost boys like the other guys and then Corey right. Haim and then G Tom Mack who played like the theme song they were all in like one panel and then the other panel was the Frog Brothers had like their own like they wouldn't put Corey and Corey together and this is when he was when Corey Felma was married to Susie because she was there as well right. it was a great event and Corey Fe Haim was so he was so happy to be there and he was so into his fans in the sense where like, I think with Corey Haim's career, it, it, it was, it's a sad one, man, because he had so much talent as a kid. I mean, he was like leading movies as a young kid, like Corey Feldman was in the best. He was in better movies, right? When you look at your walls and you're like, Oh my God, I'm surrounded by Corey Feldman because it's like, he was Donatello and Ninja Turtles. He was in Friday four. He was in gremlins. He was in Goonies. Like, he was in the right. burbs. Like I look around my room and I'm like, dude, there's so many Feldman movies here. But Feldman was never really the lead. He was always in better movies. But Haim was in a lot of movies where he was like kind of the lead and he really shined. And it just kind of, you know, it's kind of tough to see how he kind of it kind of worked out for him. And 
he was just so thankful for the fans that were there to meet him. He like, you know, he was hugging everybody. He was like, thank you so much for being here. Like, I appreciate you so much. Like things are going to get better. I think I'm going to be fine. You know, it was, it was a cool meeting, man. And we were leaving and he was outside like smoking a cigarette or whatever. And he's like, I'll see you later guys. And then I saw him again in October. Um, and then he was dead in March. So, oh, wow. yeah, it, it was, it, it was definitely, uh, my all time favorite meeting just because, it was at the time it seemed surreal because I'm such a big fan. And then to him to be gone within a year um, from the first time I met him was just, I met him in March the year before he died. And then I also met him in October again, that same year I saw him. Um, yeah. So that's probably the most memorable. Um, you know, like I said, Felissa Rose is probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. She's just so friendly. Um, you know, I've had some bad experiences. Uh, Tiny Lister was a bad experience for me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, he was. And the thing was with Tiny Lister is that I couldn't, I think he was playing a gimmick. Like, I think he was playing Debo. He oh, wasn't really? being, he wasn't being himself. So it was a Snatch weird, all, chain. dude, it was weird. Like he was like, to me and the person in front of me and stuff, like, you know, he wouldn't smile. He wouldn't talk. He would kind of like yell at you and stuff. And you weren't sure if this was him or if he was like just playing a gimmick, like you couldn't tell. And it was a real awkward, awkward experience with him. Uh, Tom Savini, I met twice. The first time I met him, he was kind of a prick. And then the second time I met him, he was fine. Um, you know, this was like my first, I think it was the same convention I met Corey Haim. I got there. I got up early in the morning on Saturday. I was all excited. I ran downstairs. I'm like, I'm going to get Savini first. And I walked yeah. over. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? He's like, I'm tired. It's early. You know, like that was his, you know, what do you want? That, like he gave it. That's it, right? That was <laughs> it, man. And, um. But how about you? Uh, what, how about you? Do you have any that so far that you've met that you were like incredible and then some that you were kind of like, eh, not the best? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the one of the worst was uh, Andrew Barnarski, you know. Oh, I, um, I always hear that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he like, I mean, he was charged. First of all, he was charging so much more for his photo and the, the vibe that he was putting off. I just I didn't even want to take the photo with him. And when I turned down the photo, he just kind of uh, flipped the the autograph over toward me, you know, and like didn't say anything after that. Um, and plus, he like smelled so bad, like of, of weed, like he'd just gotten back off break or something, and he must have just been just token up, you know, big time. Um, but uh, yeah, he was kind of unpleasant, and then uh, but. I've had some really good ones because um, I've, I've been to some like small conventions where there just wasn't any lines at all. And, and I got some real good FaceTime with like Tom Atkins and it was when uh, like uh, uh, Stacy Nelkin was like there with him. And, you know, we were just sitting there chatting, you know, for a good 15 minutes, you know, I mean, I went to school in Pittsburgh. He still lives in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, we were talking all about that kind of stuff. And and uh, Nick Castle was really good, too. Um, you know, he, he had stepped away from his, his table. And I was up there looking at all the prints that he had on the table. And he just comes up and, like, you know, puts his arm around me. And he's like, uh, do you, you want to get something signed, young man? <laughs> now, and, if, if, if you want, I think Dead Pit has – Andrew Bernarski's phone number. If you want to call him and tell him off, or whatever, they'll probably just they'll probably, <laughs> <laughs> they'll probably just post it down low. <laughs> uh, Kane Hodder was super entertaining. Oh yeah, I mean, oh my god, yeah, he was. I, I have some of that on uh, on a, a convention video that I did on my channel. But uh, yeah, I mean, he he sent this uh, like I don't know nine or ten year old girl over to um like her whole family went and got stuff signed and as they were leaving he calls her back over and he tells her he goes go over to um oh that's uh, the the guy who did the uh he was jason in the remake oh yeah uh oh my god um, mirrors mirrors Derek Derek Mears, Mears. Yeah, yeah 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 he he's, he told her he said go over and tell Derek mirrors that your version of Jason is a bitch. <laughs> and he says, if you'll do that, I'll, I'll give you a, a, one of these uh, prints, you know, for free, like an autograph. 
And so her and her sister go over to Derek Mears and they chicken out. <laughs> oh <laughs> they my chicken God. out at the last moment. They they come back to the table and and they said that you know they couldn't do it. Um and the little girl looked like she was almost gonna cry, you know. And uh he ends up, you know, bringing her over. He ends up giving her the, the photo anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually caught that on tape. That's on that's on my channel as well. Yeah, he um he's always been very entertaining. There was actually a story at one of the conventions I went to where he he cut somebody's arm with a freaking machete for real, and the guy had to go to the hospital and get s- stitches. I believe it. Well, um, yeah. when I was there, uh, there was a kid getting a machete signed, and uh, he told me to put my hand on the table, and then he just chops the table like really hard, you know. Oh yeah. But he was he was pretty far away from my you know from my hand, but um. Yeah, I could see where that could happen. Oh yeah, the guy got they the the whole place. They like ambulance ran in. They had to take the guy out. Uh, sliced his forearm, I guess. I guess he was playing around, and I guess didn't realize how sharp the damn thing was. And uh, yeah, uh, it's crazy. Um, Dead Pit wants to know if you can do DVD slips. I'm sure you could with the right. Uh yeah, I mean you know it's a different size, but yeah, it's uh it's doable. I have a feeling Dead Pit is going to put out some limited edition uh, into the pit documentaries with slips. That's what I think you're going to do, aren't you? <laughs> I think that's, I think that's where your mind's going right now. That'd be pretty cool though. Um, let me see uh, what else we have because there's a lot of things. I'm way behind still. Um, Beetlejuice was 88, 88. Everybody's saying 87, 88. <clears throat> um, let's see. Also, oh, Ken met mid level. Mid level met Cena at a car show before he was big. Well, you don't. Yeah, that that hoodie's probably pretty valuable, man. Oh wow, you went to OVW shows when Cena was there. I think you told me that actually. What's up, Bob? What's up, man? Um, Bob's Blu rays. Punisher Batman fan. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was lucky because, like I said, I almost missed out. Um. Oh wow! You just watched Lost Boys, yeah, man. I can't wait for that 4K. Now let me ask you this: Um, have you ever ordered from Cine Museum before? Is that what I think that's they're called? Uh, I've never even heard of it before. You um mentioned it, and I looked it up. You know, to see that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I never even heard of it. To be honest with you. Um, so I think that set looks fantastic and, you know, I'm such a huge Lost Boys fan. Of course I want it. I mean, it's $200 for, it's a $200 set for a movie that, for one movie. And that kind of sucks. It comes with a lot of goodies. Um, it's basically the Zavi set with just cooler artwork. And I think you get like two versions, like two different movies, two Lost Boys movies in there with like different covers. I don't know. It's a whole big thing. But right. somebody messaged me after I posted that picture and they said, Hey man, just a heads up when you pre-order from cinema museum, they don't, you don't get your item for about a year. Oh my at God. That point, I, at that point I was like, shit, like, I don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger on this because I don't want to buy this and then buy, like I already ordered the Zavi set. Like, I don't know if I can do both. Right. You know, that's not, the Zavi set was like 60 bucks itself pretty much or 60 or $70. And then to no, do this I mean, and then to wait a year, I'm like, eh, like, I don't. So that's why I'm curious. Has anybody ordered from them to tell me that that's literally the case or if that person was trolling me or what? But like, that's craziness. If that, because I'm assuming they're going to have to take the pre orders and then use that money to pay to do these. I'm thinking that's probably what's going to happen. Um, but I don't yeah, know. I didn't, but I didn't know. The, you know, they didn't have a, a, a release date on that one. No. Or a pre order you know, so, Yeah. So that, that makes me a little bit, um, you know, I mean, they should know a release date by now. You would think so. Yeah. And they haven't, I, I, I'm hearing they haven't put the pre order up yet. Um, they said it says sold out or something, but they said it's really hasn't even, the pre order hasn't even gone up. But I don't know. I'm just curious about that, that company because I don't want to have to wait that long for it. There might be something cool available overseas at some point. Um, 
you know, like if you're wanting something more, uh, I think, I think something like that might happen. Uh, you mm -hmm. were talking about X earlier. I mean, th yeah. that is, that does have a 4k. It's, it comes out on September 2nd. Uh, Cape Light Pictures is putting that out. Now, is that overseas? It is. It's a, uh, yeah, they do. Um, yeah, it's a, it's got two, um, uh, media books coming out. Okay, I'll have to check it out. I saw somebody post about a Steelbook 4K coming out. I don't know if that was here or somewhere else. Mm, it could, it could sure. be. I mean, they they probably got one. But yeah, September 2nd, those uh, come out. Now, I asked um, the guy who you know does the Orbit uh, DVD, yep. I asked him if he would be getting those in, and he said that he would. So they'll, they'll show up okay. on Orbit. But and, um, that's, and that's what? Which one? Oh, the X one? Yeah, X, yeah. Yeah, there's two different media books. It's the cover, you know, the the traditional cover, and then the one where she's got her legs crossed to make the X. But, oh, that's, uh, yeah, I like that image. Both both really cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be picking that up. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I need I need to get a version of it. I need to get something nice. Um, but Pop's but, Movie Dungeons, look at yeah. that, dude. He's ready. There's the there's the slip everybody wanted. That's true. Remember they announced that like a long time ago. That's the one ever that's the image everybody posted. It was like that fright rags image or whatever that is there. Yeah. Oh baby. I don't know if anybody likes that version because I the the new slip I don't hate the steel book, but I know a lot of people don't like it. Um but I mean at this state of the game, you could even put that thing over a steel book, right? Probably. Um you know what's crazy? I mean, I've had um, I've had a few people uh, order these because they don't want the slip that comes with it. Yeah, I don't I don't really like the the slip that comes with the new one. I don't mind the steel book image. I know people didn't like that one. I don't mind the steel book. Uh, I don't like the image of I don't mind the image of them hanging from the thing either. I don't like the way it says Lost Boys. It's like in the the bridge. Yeah, it that is weird. that is weird. That that cover art is beautiful. That's like if I, you know, that's the one I would love to have had. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely, yeah, guys. Great. If you're getting that version, um, hit him up if you want to change it out. I ordered the Zavi set, so I should be good. And I've never ordered them for, for them before ever. So I'm wondering, like, do those come around the same time this thing's going to be released, or am I going to be waiting a month and a half after? Do you know? Do you know? Um. I've never pre-ordered actually from Zavi. I've I've picked mm -hmm. things up, you know, after after the fact. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm not I'm not real sure. Uh, I'm gonna say what's up to Pop, dude. I don't know what it is, and, and there's some people that, and, and I'm gonna even say maybe you, uh, to be honest. I never see videos from you guys pop up in my feed ever. Like Pop's another one where I'm like, is he has Pop done anything? in the last couple of weeks and I have to search his name and like look for his stuff. I, I don't know what it is with the way. And, and I don't know, it could be me because when people sub to me, if I see that they have a channel, I'll sub back. Right. You know, a, as a courtesy to that. So maybe I'm flooding myself with subs and that like people are getting lost, but like Justin movie watch daily, his stuff never shows up on my feed. You don't show up on my feed quite often. Pops hasn't showed up. Pops used to show up my feet a lot and he hasn't. And I think I even asked Brian goes blue or something. I was like, has pop been doing vids? Um, maybe it was Brian. I don't know. Somebody I was talking to. Um, but what is up pop? Welcome, man. How are you? I don't know what's going on with the, with that thing. Like, do you see pops videos? Do you see mine? Do you scroll um, through? Yeah, I, I see pretty much everyone's videos. Um, I don't know. They, maybe you gotta hit that notification bell. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. I probably that's don't probably even have that. I probably didn't do that. You're right. Look at that. And I know what's funny is I never really even tell people to do that on my stuff. I forget. Hit the notification bell. Speaking of that, hit the like button, smash it, kick it, roundhouse kick it, high kick it, stun it, stun that bell uh, to get the notifications and uh, super kick that like button. <laughs> Brian Trash says howdy. Slasher Home Video is in the house. What is going on, man? Wait, Slasher, Slasher Home, Video. Home Video, man. That's uh, I, I just started watching his channel, him and Slaughterport. 
Yes. Uh, both those both those guys are awesome. I, I really am digging their channels. Um, and he was like the uh, the horror YouTuber of the month, the and then then he like nominated a whole new group here, uh, including um, uh, Miss Jess. Miss Jess is in the is in the running. But well, uh, yeah, man, I, it's been so much fun. Like I've been like reaching out to like some horror, more horror channels because. Honestly, I don't know if my channel is more of a horror channel or a or a blue tuber channel. I don't. It's some kind of hybrid, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, don't put me in a box. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's that's tough too. Sometimes when people when people do that, because um, I'm I'm finding a lot of people that are getting themselves kind of niched, too niched are are finding they're they're stuck now and they're they're kind of feeling like they've got they've cornered themselves in a hole where you know I'm kind of happy heard, to heard, say. I've heard yeah, Christian yeah. Hanna talk about that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I've a couple other people recently have kind of said the same thing. And, um, you know, and that's why I kind of like the idea of, you know, changing it up in the sense where when you see my stuff, it's like, Hey, mostly you're going to see mostly eighties and nineties stuff. You're going to see horror. You're going to see this. So I try not to pull myself into like, Hey, it's only horror on this channel. You're going to see it. But at the same time, like having Rad Pack and stuff now we can kind of, we branch out a lot um, with that. So, like we're going to be doing an Encino man show coming up. That's going to be one of the next ones that we're going to do. So we're going to branch outside that as well. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, like you said, you're kind of following different channels and you're right. Slash on video. I think he's the current YouTuber of the month. Yeah, so the, congrats the to him, man. Current guy, yeah. So congratulations. Um, and, and, and he doesn't, he doesn't have a ton of subs yet. So everyone needs to go over and, and sub. I'm telling you, it's a really good channel. I mean, the guy, he's he's funny. He's, he's the videos look good. Um, he knows his stuff. Uh, he's entertaining. Um, yeah, I've just really enjoyed his channel quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I would say go sub to him as well, and make sure you guys are if you haven't sub to my man over here. Um, so I'd also send him or if you have not. Um, here's another one too. I'm gonna ask you if you've seen this yet. Have you seen? The ET 4K with the lunchbox. Did you see that posted today? Uh, yeah, I, I put up my a video today, the um, art of collecting, and I actually it's included in my thumbs up or thumbs down. Oh, so I, don't, I won't have you say it here. Uh, you guys are gonna have to watch for his opinion on that video. So go find it, watch it. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm in the middle. Um, I want that thermos and lunchbox. I want it, but if I had to choose which 4K of ET I want, I want the Steelbook. So that's where I'm going to run into a problem. I don't want to buy all of it. I don't want to buy this set for the price it's asking, which is pretty steep, and then go and buy a Steelbook on top of it. That, I just don't want to have to do that. And I don't have ET on 4K, and mm. I think it already has a 4K, I think. It does. I only have, yeah. I only have like a Digibook Blu-ray, and I have like a big DVD set. So I'm due for an ET upgrade. So I'm going to get the Steel, but... That lunchbox I'm on the fence for, I want that in the thermos because it looks so retro and it's a real cool looking one. But all those other goodies in there, I don't know what I'd do with them, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, you mentioned uh, what did I miss out on that I kind of wish I had. Mm -hmm. And I saw you, I, I think I was maybe flipping through your Instagram or something, uh, that Halloween lunchbox that you got from, uh, ah, fright, from rags. Like, what, fright Rags. Yeah that yeah i missed out on that i would i would have loved to have had that i like that it's a nice it's a nice piece did you get the night the night living dead one i didn't get that one i was i've been on the fence about it i think it might be still available that one um but i didn't get that one no i, but like I, I just recently started picking up those those lunch boxes i mean at first i was like oh, i don't need these you know these will never be uh that valuable you know because you know they're it's not like the old lunch boxes, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. And then, you know, five or six of them later, it's another thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. And it's like anything else. As soon as you get started, you're like, I want more. Like I have some lunchbox, not a ton, just a couple, but there's some cool ones out there. Like retro ones. Like my uncle has a Texas chainsaw one from like way back in the day. I mean, I don't know how old it is, but it's not new. I know that much. Um, so a lot of it, there's some cool stuff out there. I think he's even got like a Rambo one, like a cartoon Rambo yeah. from back in the day. It's a real cool one. 
Um, but you know, I also have, I think Jurassic world had one when it came out on Blu-ray, I think, uh, I think I yeah, grabbed that yeah, one. I remember that one. Well. Yep. Yeah, I do. I have that one, but yeah, I think they're pretty cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid what's going to happen is I'm going to, I'm going to not get ET. It's going to sell out and then I'm going to be pissed the lunchbox. Right. I think that's what's going to happen. So I, I, I'm probably going to freaking get it and then figure out what I'm going to do with the other. I don't know what I'm going to do, but, um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna watch your video and see what you have to say about it. Yeah, uh, you'll also see like a I have a um, a 40th anniversary like art piece that D Wallace made, and she signed it for me. Oh, so you what? have something from her signed uh, already from ET, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm curious to see what it is because I'm gonna have them do a signing on something too, and I'm curious to see what you got it. Because, like, well, when I went to her table, she had all these, like, uh, sculptures on her table. Like, there was a St. Bernard, and there was E.T., and there was, um, like, a, a werewolf. Like, there was all these different things. And um, I really liked the E.T. one. And so I, I, you know, the guy told me, like, if I wanted to buy it, it was, like, 50 bucks, and they would kick in the autograph for free. And so I was hmm. like, oh, that's a that's a no-brainer. Yeah. I got to do that. That's cool. So I had her sign my Cujo poster, and I got the uh, the E.T. piece signed as well. Is that on uh, one of your convention vids? It is, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll make sure to go back and check those out too. Uh, Fish the Film Collector, what is up? I don't usually see you in the chat, so uh, welcome and thank you. Uh, I don't really see Dale Gribble in the chat either, so that's a different name. Oh, no, I've seen you've been in here. Uh, Brendan Fraser, retrospective. He gets a little... I, I agree. Brendan Fraser had a pretty good career for a while, and I guess some stuff happened with him, and, and that's why he was out for a while. Um, yeah, and he's a way better actor than some of the roles that he kind of got boxed into. I mean, if you watch him in, like, School Ties, mm -hmm. I mean, that that was a great movie. And, you know, he played that really well. Yeah, I was lucky enough to meet him um, and got my Encino Man poster signed uh, recently, probably within the last two years. Super nice guy, uh, for sure. Dead Pit. Oh, yeah, they did. Don't tell her it's me. He just did a review on. So he's saying he does what he wants. He's not going to just stick to horror. Um, guys, that's a great movie. If anybody hasn't seen it, it just came out, I think, from Kino, I believe. But... That's an awesome movie with Steve Gutenberg. If anybody hasn't seen it, I'm, I'm dying to get my hands on it. it. Used to be, it's an, it goes by another name called Boyfriend School. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Oh, okay, yeah, that just came out. Yeah, so yeah. I'm excited to snag that one. It's a yeah, I cool remember movie. that. It's where he dresses like like a biker or something, right? Yeah. Like, he, yeah, <laughs> he's so cool. He's got the long hair. With like, the, I love it. I love it. <laughs> movie watches in the house. Get both. Yeah, you know, it's probably what's going to end up happening. Even though I told, I, I say I'm not double dipping. I'm not buying multiples of the same thing. But, man, I don't know. You're welcome, buddy. Look at that. Rad Pack is complete in the house. Brian yeah. Trash does not like E.T. You know, I'm personally more of a Mac and me guy myself. But I have to appreciate E.T. Uh, for what it is. Um, oh, here we go. Pop's got a video uploading now. Ah, All right. There you go. All right, I'll be sure to check it out. I'm gonna, I'll let you know if I don't see it on my feed, brother. ET, I know mid level's a big ET fan. I have a really cool ET poster. It's like the the original art with just the fingers kind of touching. I that's probably what I'm gonna get signed. But if I find something else cool, uh, I will. Well, they got a new uh, Toonie Terrors coming out. Um, or no, not not Toonie Terrors. It's a, a Funko Pop, and it's got like the it's the bicycle scene with the moon in the background. And it lights up. What? Really? I'll yeah, check, I've got, I'll a, check I've got a pre order. Neck is doing a. You see, Neck is doing an ultimate uh, uh, Elliot and um, ET on the bikes. They're doing like yeah. an ultimate edition of that. It's going to be really cool. Um, a lot of Encino Man stuff coming through. Uncle Rad. Yeah, I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. Um, Adam's 80s fan. All right, we'll kind of finish these comments and then we'll, we'll let you kind of sign us off here. Um, I'll scroll through and kind of see what you guys are saying. Over there. Oh, sorry. Oh. I don't know what the heck well, that was. I don't know what the hell that was. Sorry, it, guys. It heard you were going to end the stream and it got Why? angry. It got mad. Damn. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, found a cool Gargoyles lunchbox at Thrift. Oh, remember that show? 
think they have figures oh, of that now. That's cool. Yeah, I love uh, those gargoyles. You know what, guys? Let's. I'll talk about this really quick. I was on the fence about maybe trying to get the um, steel book as well, just because it's a real nice looking steel book, and because it's a Best Buy exclusive. Like I'm not doing Screen Factory steel books really. Well, I lied because I got Red Dawn, but that was that's a gorgeous steel book. If you guys haven't seen the Red Dawn steel book, like I recommend checking that out. It's one of the nicest looking steels I think I have in my collection, but. Um, when I went to Best Buy to pick it up because I had it on pre-order, I was like, oh, maybe I'll get Child's Play or whatever. Dude, there was zero Red Dawn on the shelf, and there must have been 15 Child's Play steelbooks on that shelf. I have never seen so many movies of the same movie on a shelf at Best Buy in probably like five, six, seven years. I was wow. like, what? Like, I thought maybe I would grab it because I'm like, oh, it'll probably be rare at some point, you know, because it's exclusive. Right. And I still might get it, but I was just shocked. I didn't buy it, but I was shocked to be like, wow, there's so many. And I'm wondering how easy those are going to be to get now. It's it's hmm. just interesting that there was so many on the shelf. I had never seen anything like it. Um, it's good so we got a lot of people. Yeah, did you get it or no? Uh, no, no. Did you get uh, Red Dawn or did you get it at all? I, I did. I got Red Dawn. I just got the... Uh... I just got the regular. Oh, the addition, the 4K like select. The regular slip, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I will give Screen Factory uh, some credit on is um, what I heard they're doing, and and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is if people are shout select collectors, I'm not. I collect shout select, but I don't. I'm not a completist. Like I don't need all the shout select. It doesn't stress me out. So most of my shout selects don't have slips. Like I'm not really. They're in their own little section. They're fine. Um, but if you are a completist when it comes to that. I guess the upgrades they're doing, they're replacing it. So, for instance, I think, like, the Red Dawn was number 21 or whatever. Well, if you get the Red Dawn one on 4K, it's 21. So you could okay. easily just flip it. So, like, if you're missing one that they happen to re-release on 4K and you buy it, then the numbers all match up, which I think is a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Um, you know, because then you can, you can fill in some holes of ones that may be out of print now that they re-release. I mean, who knows? But... I think that's kind of a cool idea um, to have done that. So in case you you missed out on one without a slip or whatever you want, and then you were like, oh, well, if I get this one, it'll match in, and you just swap them out. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, I did not have Hulk Hogan's thermos. Um, I had a He-Man lunchbox, though. A Rad Pack <laughs> lunchbox. I had a Mario Super Mario lunchbox. Um, Carlos, never seen you in the chat before, but welcome Greetings from Oklahoma. Um, oh, okay. So Lepke says you do show that off in your recent thing as well. Yeah. Wow. It seems like everybody bought that that uh, that lunchbox. Now I'm wondering if I should get it before it's gone. <laughs> Come on, I love Mac. Listen, I told. I don't know if I told. I told this story a bunch of times. Um, we'll probably have to. I'll tell it again, Ken, because I know we're working on something with this. But um, <laughs> as a kid, ET scared me and my brother. That yeah. scene of him at the like in the like when he was down in the water, like when they found him like half dead, right? And then from that point, like when he was like they had him in the plastic and they like started wrapping the house, like that shit like scared my brother and I big time. We were like, we don't want to watch ET. And then when Mac and we found Mac <laughs> and me, it was like a, a, a funner alternative for us. So Mac and me is like what we would watch all the time as kids. Um, so yeah. I just have like a real fun memory as a as a movie. E.T. is a better movie. I mean, no doubt. Um, but I don't know. Uh, thought Dead Pit was coming. <laughs> E.T. cut the stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let me see. I just got Child's Play Steelbook, and it was beautiful. It was the opposite of Best Buy. No Child's. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. Look at Pop. Video just went live. Hit that bell. All right, I'll do it when I'm done. <laughs> also, you're just bouncing now, Bob. Is that what you're telling me? You're going to go bounce. His video will be there when we're done. Um, Do a live buy. Speaking of that, thank you for the transition. Tomorrow night, guys, 11.30 p.m., I'll be going on with Dead Pit in a simulcast for our annual Vinegar Syndrome uh, sale. I know it's the Summer Fest first ever, but you know how we roll. Every time they do a midnight sale, uh, we're on there live buying. I have no idea what they're going to announce. I haven't even looked at like any 
clues or rules or whatever. I just was told they're doing the sale. Be there and uh, we'll be there having a party like we always do. So come head over there tomorrow at 1130. Um, Lepke needs a Hulk Hogan head squirter and a Hulk Hogan pillow buddy. I have a Hogan wrestling buddy and I don't have a squirter. I have a Savage and a Warrior squirter, but that's it. Um, California Raisins Lunchbox. That's cool. All right, here's Side Hustle. There's a question for you, man. Go for it. What is your favorite vampire film? Uh, well, that's um, that's going to be Lost Boys. That's, uh, you too? that's number. Yep, it is. Oh man, I I love it, dude. Like I, that's I'm happy to. I'm finding more and more people love the Lost Boys more than I thought they would have in the horror community because Lost Boys is one of those movies where it's a horror movie, but at the same time, I could see a lot of people being like, "Oh, it's lame." The same way people could say like, "Oh, like you know, uh." poison is a lame it's not metal that's lame right like like i'm trying to think of different like hair bands or whatever like that's lame that's not heavy metal right but it seems like a lot of people really love the lost boys because sometimes i felt like i was on an island with only a few people with that with loving lost boys so much and uh fright night is a, a close two for me i think as a whole fright night's a better horror movie but i think lost boys to me is just the, the total package of uh yeah of the look, fright, the fright feel, night. you know Fright Night's good. Um, there's parts of Fright Night that has it held up as well. You know, um, you know, some of the casting choices feel weird now. You know, because I remember, um, I remember like uh, I think I was telling like one of my nephews or something. I'm like, uh, you know, yeah, he's got this 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 hot girlfriend, and then. We were watching it, and I realized that the girlfriend is Marcy Darcy. Marcy Darcy from. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's like, that's who you thought was hot. <laughs> oh my god! It's and like, it's true. It is kind of a weird. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is interesting. Actually, you know what? Like, I will say, I met the cast from Fright Night. Yeah. Um, and she couldn't have been nicer. She was so nice, man. Like, actually, they all were really. Chris Sarandon, he, he he's a give or take for me. I've met Sarandon a bunch of times, but he could go yeah. either way. Like he's either got good days or bad days. He's still um, doing the circuit. He's still doing the circuit, and uh, he's he's an interesting one. Um, I was actually with Piz at a convention, and uh, we met him. And I think like he, I think something with Sarandon where I think he changed his price on the fly or something like that, like. <laughs> He saw he was getting busy, so he like crossed it out and like wrote something else, something weird oh, like that. Man. So we always had this kind of weird thing about Sarandon, like. But I I love Sarandon. I mean, I love a lot of his work. I've Jerry Dandridge is probably one of my favorite vampires of all time. Like I, I absolutely love Fright Night. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of we were talking about convention, so it was kind of one I forgot to bring out is where he could be uh, give or take. But Guys, we've been on here an hour and 49 minutes, 49 minutes more than I usually do on these rad companies. So thank you, dude, for uh, for keeping this lively. I appreciate that from you, Side Hustle. Oh, and the chat, it was so lively. We had so much we wanted to talk about that I, I kind of couldn't get to everybody's uh, questions. So uh, before we wrap it up, because like I said, I will catch most of you guys tomorrow night at 1130. Come back now. Um, man, Promote what you've got coming up, uh, your channels, your Instagram. Let people know where they can find you and what's to come on Side Hustle Cinema's channel. All right. Well, guys, um, you know, uh, I keep it real simple as far as, you know, how to find me. Side Hustle Cinema here on YouTube and on Instagram and on uh, Twitter, although I mostly just retweet. Um, I don't do a lot of original stuff on there. But, um, uh, yeah, I've got to, probably going to do a collection haul tomorrow. Um, I, I'm going to uh, do my Spirit Halloween uh, video soon. I, I know a lot of those have been out, but uh, I've got some stuff to pick up there. There's some definite some stuff I want. Um, so I'll probably do that. Uh, I, I've got a video uh, shot already where I went to second and Charles. Um, I got to get that thing edited and uh, get that out. But um, yeah, it's just some different things. I don't know. I don't plan too far ahead. Um, so yeah, um, come on over. Uh, 
watch the art of collecting. Uh, I've been doing a slip cover giveaway uh, every week. As long as the, you know, the people keep entering the contest, we'll keep that rolling. Um, I don't mind doing that. It's kind of fun. I like seeing what people pick and, and uh, just kind of have fun with it. And um, yeah, so, and you know, if you guys want something made, uh, you know, you hit me up on Instagram. I, I am pretty busy. So it, you know, we can discuss it and it might take a little longer. Um, but I, you know, we can, I can definitely work something out and help you out with whatever you need. Um, but, uh, yeah, it does. I do have a full-time job and it ain't this. <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Thousand, thousands of dollars for one. Well, you know what? Yeah. I mean, it, it really blew up way. It got way bigger than, than I thought it would. I mean, I, I, I sent you a little screenshot you did. of what's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah it's, man. It's, it's, it's a good, good side stuff. hustle. Put it that way. It's a, it's a nice side hustle you got going on. It there. is. So, yeah, man. Thank you so much for being on. It was it was a great conversation. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Before we leave, I know Lepke just popped in another two dollar super chat. Had a blast tonight, fellas, and everyone in the chat. Thank you so much, dude. And you've got to email both of us, so don't forget. All right. Um, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Uh, so we'll hit you off with a little hame. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Like I said, stop by tomorrow at 1130 for the Vinegar Syndrome stream. And Side Hustle, thank you again so much for being on here. Guys, reach out time. to him if you need any of those slips that we talked about. Um, I know I'm going to be reaching out because I want one of those VHS display stands. I just going to make up my mind on what exactly I'm doing here. But definitely want one. Check out his videos. He shows those off on, I think it was one of his recent ones. He showed it off and I was blown away. I messaged him right away about it. But um, I will be sure to check out some of your convention ones because I'm kind of dying to see um, that that one with uh, D Wallace or whatever. Yeah, that was so, that was the last one. That was the Spooky Empire one. Yep. I'll check. So every time you go to a convention, are you wearing the, the, the glasses? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, awesome, it's, you know, you get some good footage. That you can't get. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, it's funny. I've never seen anybody do that before. I've never seen anybody do a convention video wearing uh, video camera glasses. It's never. So I don't know if you've seen other people doing it and that's why you decide to do it or if, they're, you if know, you're one I, of the only ones doing it that way. I, I bought them because, you know, I, I wanted to do some out and about in, in the stores and I didn't feel comfortable, you know, doing the, you know, walking around with the cell phone, you know, talking to yourself. Mm hmm kind of deal mm -hmm. and uh so i bought those glasses for that but you know then i don't know then stores kind of stop you know having like good stuff in them and uh yeah <laughs> so it it got to the point where uh i would just take those around you know every now and again but yeah whenever i go to a convention you know i always have like you know i have my phone i've got like um i had it here somewhere i had like a Oh yeah, this this little camera right here, like this little guy, and then uh, and then the glasses. So I, I try to make sure I can you know get that sneaky stuff. I, I wish I would have you know been able to get like Nev Campbell saying that she was out for uh, the scream. I mean, yeah, you know I, what though, all, guys, all that all that came from um, you know uh, oh Master Chaos's video, him and uh, Wet Movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, like, and then it broke. Like, it became like big news that yes. that she was out, and then she was in. Now she's out again. It did. It um, you know what though? So, guys, if you ever meet this dude in person and he's wearing glasses, just realize you're being recorded. All right. So we've learned that today, at least. Yeah. So <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna be recording you. But anyway, <laughs> dude, thank you so much for being here. I totally appreciate it again. Had a great time. On our Rad Company episode three, check out my first two Rad Company episodes. I did one with uh, Sassy Sledgehammer and the other one with Pops Movie Dungeon. And you are number three, my man. And again, guys in the chat, thank you so much for the super chats. Thank you so much for hanging out. We've been above 50 people pretty much the whole stream. So very cool. Thank you so much for checking it out. Make sure you sub if you are not subbed to my channel or Side Hustle Seminar. And I will see you guys tomorrow. And like always, Stay.